welcome back my dear children i hope you are doing great staying at home and keeping a sound health well today we are back again with a new lesson from civics again now in the last day we had discussed about our government where i had told you that our government is a body which actually controls or functions in various uh, at various le levels through their various branches a government decide on our policies it guide us so as what to do it also help us maintaining a balanced life it actually directs us guide us whenever we have any confusion now if we see children that whatever the government uh, tell us or direct us is not actually told by them okay there has to be some guidelines from the very beginning what the government actually follows now if we see then if we go through the history of uh, india if we go through indian history we will uh, see that we have our uh, constitution which is a book of uh, written a written book uh, having set of rules and policies now just as different religions have their own uh you know holy book like the like the muslims have uh, bhagavad gita sorry the hindus uh, have bhagavad gita the muslims have muslims have the holy quran okay then the buddhist have the Tri tripitakas so all these are actually nothing but the guidelines so as how they perform their rituals in their religion now in the same way the government of every country follow some rules or regulations based on which the country runs smoothly so the book which they refer while governing the country is called the constitution we all know that the father of our constitution was dr b r ambedkar well it was adopted our constitution was adopted in the year 1949 and the date was 26th of november just in the next year our constitution came into effect on 26th of january 1950 and we celebrate this day as what republic day yes because our constitution was so powerful our constitution was so methodical and organized and you know comprised of uh, such uh, rules that we still follow and our next generations will be following without which we cannot run a country without which we cannot you know cannot Uh, we won't be able to know about our country at all well you will be surprised to know that this particular constitution is the largest written constitution in the world indian constitution is the largest written constitution in the world and the various policies and the uh, the different rules and regulations have been adopted from different countries whatever they follow whatever the other countries follow accordingly we have adopted few uh, policies in our constitution for only the betterment of our countrymen well today we will see in this chapter that is chapter 11 about rights and duties whose right and whose duties of course the rights of the indian citizens that is the rights of the rights that we enjoy the rights that you enjoy the rights that i enjoy okay and the duties that we have to perform and all these were directed by none other than our constitution 
our written constitution and we have to follow it rigidly okay so let's uh, take a sneak peek into the chapter well in the first page that is page 94 children you will see that the constitution of india uh, is uh, having basically the three different parameters that is fundamental rights fundamental duties and directive principles of state policy okay so on these three pillars our constitution of india is lying or uh, it is having this three pillars well in many countries including india the citizens have certain rights okay a government is responsible for protecting the rights of its people so a government is held responsible for each and everything you know nowadays we are a little more glued to the uh, news channel so whenever there is a hike in the petrol prices whenever there is a hike in the diesel prices whom do we blame of course the government if there is any hike in the onion prices potato prices are rising vegetables are you know uh, prices are soaring high so whom we are blaming of course the government so the way we lead our life our daily livelihood or our day to day expenditure and savings whatever we come across or whatever we could make we actually blame or praise our government why so because we actually elect them and bring them to the power all right well now we will see that uh, what what are the things that the government tells us apart from this the government also make different laws and ensures that these laws are followed by the people the government follows a set of rules or basic principles when making a law and it cannot be taken away take away and uh, it cannot take away the basic rights of its citizens these set of rules and principles are compiled and included in a document called constitution just what i told you so all these are compiled and has been directed in our constitution The Constitution of India is one of the longest written constitution in the world. It took 2 years, 11 months and 17 days to complete the task of drafting the constitution. So it takes really long time of 2 years, 7 11 months and 17 days. Dr. B R Ambedkar played a crucial role as the chairman of the drafting committee which prepared the entire constitution. It was adopted on 26th of November 1949 and came into effect on 26th of January 1950. Okay these two dates are important don't get confused between the dates and the year. Now why is the constitution important for us? It is actually the source of all the laws and powers in our country. It tells us about tells us how the government is formed. It tells the government what what it can do and what it cannot do it prevents the government from becoming all powerful so it actually maintains a balance between the government and its people how when if a gov uh, government goes uh, you know without following or runs uh, things or uh, think of running its government without following the constitution it will be penalized so it cannot do whatever it wa- it want uh, it wants to it has to follow some guidelines guided by our constitution okay the citizens of india have certain rights they also have certain duties these rights and duties are provided by our constitution so the rights and the duties that we have uh, it is preset it has been preset by the constitution of india now we will go into the fundamental rights at first the fundamental rights are the privileges given to every citizen by the constitution of india these rights are necessary to help people become better citizens if anyone takes away these rights the, uh, any citizen can go to the court for their protection the government also keeps in mind that the rights of the citizen 
when making any law so the different so as an as an indian we have different rights and what the what the constitution has said is we should be well aware of these rights okay we should be well aware of these rights and in case any of these rights are taken away from us we can go to the court for seeking justice okay while knowing about judiciary i told you that judiciary comprises of the court the judges the magistrate okay the lawyers the, they are the pillars of judiciary what is their aim to seek justice or to find out the truth behind every action okay and accordingly they give punishment to the victims now the constitution guarantees six fundamental rights to every indian citizen six is the number okay six fundamental rights so what are these first is right to equality very very important right right to equality which guarantees that every citizen will be equally protected by the laws of the country citizens cannot be discriminated against on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth so we know you know rather you have learnt it that why is india called a land of uh, unity in diversity because india is filled with people belonging to different religion different caste different sect different gender and a lot of other rituals which do not match with each other so in order to protect the 135 million of people of india the constitution has been designed in a way that it guarantees right to equality to everyone okay all right second is right to freedom every indian citizen in our country is free to speak and express his or her views free to live and travel anywhere in the country free to practice any profession in the country i am a teacher maybe your father your mother your uncle your brother your sister are into some other profession isn't it no one has asked me to uh, take up teaching as my profession it was my will so i have taken any profession that i wanted the profession that i wanted of my choice so every citizen of india is free to take up or to roam or to travel anywhere in the country freely and that ensures the right to freedom they are free to speak and express their views in the class when so, some something bad happens you express your views when you read the news in the newspaper or you watch the tv you express your views isn't it we have different views after us watching a movie so that is also about expressing our views isn't it so many pol politicians they express their views on different topics so we are free to express our views thirdly right against exploitation again a very important right we cannot treat others in an unfair manner and take advantage of them we cannot be forced to work for somebody children below the age of 14 years cannot be employed in factories mines or in houses uh, as domestic labor so that ensures the uh, uh, child labor act so within this we are, are getting that children below the age of 14 years so if you employ any any of the child labor in your um, you know house for your work or in your factory or in your office or wherever it is then it's a crime because the uh, constitution does not allow children below 14 years to work anywhere on the other hand we cannot take any ad advantage of others we cannot force anyone to work for us it should come from their willingness if they are willing to work for us then they can we cannot force them next we are coming to right against sorry right to freedom of religion every citizen in our country is free to practice 
profess and propagate the religion of their choice the indian state has no religion of its own so india is a secular country india gives um you know gives you the wings of practicing any religion you want to people of the south, south uh, the the south indian people they have some other ritual the west indian people they have some other ritual the north indian people they have some other ritual we who are living in the eastern corner we have some other ritual so every every state in india rather they have their own religious practice own ritual but we are free because why because we are free to practice our own religion we are free here to practice any religion we want to okay now cultural and educational rights india is a large country where language and culture change from state to state people in each state have the right to preserve protect and follow their own culture they can also set up their own schools colleges in any part of india now cultural and educational rights in west bengal children you will find many schools which actually follow the west bengal curriculum isn't it the state curriculum that is also fine we follow the cbse curriculum that is instructed by delhi that is also fine some follow the icsc curriculum that is also uh, propagated by some parts of delhi so that is also okay so we are free to uh, set up own colleges own schools and follow any means of uh, you know study instruction and every state in every uh, every part of india they are also uh, free to follow their own culture in assam people celebrate bihu in south india they they celebrate pongal onam in maharashtra they they celebrate ganesh chaturthi so all are actually fine in west bengal we eagerly wait for durga puja so all have their own culture all have their own custom they perform it at different time of the year but with the same you know uh, bhakti or the same devotion okay so all are actually uh, guaranteed all these are guaranteed by our constitution of india okay now lastly we are coming to last but not least right to constitution and remedies which states that this right actually gives the power to seek justice in the court if our fundamental rights are taken away so if you see or if any time in life you find that you are you are, uh, you are actually stopped being express your views you are not given your um, identity you are not you are stopped from performing your cultural rituals or you are stopped from being um, taken up education then you can go to the court for seeking justice because you have to remember children it is also there in our constitution that our judiciary our judicial system is an independent system it has got no control from any one in the country so starting from a cobbler to a you know a very rich business tycoon they can all of them can go to the court for seeking justice and the court is you know there to deliver justice okay so that powerful our in indian constitution is okay so that powerful we as indian are so you should not forget that you have so much to contribute in uh, to towards your country towards the betterment of your country so children we will stop here today as the part 1 video where we have learned about the fundamental rights next day we will take a look on to the fundamental duties all right till then you will take care you will stay home and you will stay safe bye bye children mm -hmm.